So many heartbreaking accidents have happened and continue to happen. In the world, every day, more than 1,000 workers die from workplace accidents and even more people die from medical errors in hospitals. Mass casualty accidents in transport and industrial plants come up again and again in the news. Many of us are working hard to improve safety, but when asked what a safe society would look like, we are often divided and confused. There are two different ways of answering this question. Which one would you choose? The manager who has an old simplistic view. He assumes that most accidents occur because of errors and failures by irresponsible people. Either negligent workers take a deliberate risk for their convenience or greedy managements do the same to serve their own interests. When accidents happen, he blames and disciplines them. He believes that immediate harsh discipline towards such bad people will correct their behavior, serve as a warning to others, and will eventually lead to a safer society. The worker who has a new, mature view. He does not completely reject the first viewpoint, but see it as only half the story. He assumes that people can break rules when they rightly think that keeping the rules is counterproductive. He knows that people involved in accidents cannot be blamed and punished automatically. When accidents happen, he wants to see that accidents are properly investigated by experts and constructive lessons are learned by all of us. What about the way we set the safety goals? The manager who has an old, unrealistic goal. He often states that the safety of people is an absolute priority and zero accidents should be pursued. But in reality, he pushes his businesses to be faster, better and cheaper, not able to see that it compromises safety. The worker who has a new, realistic goal. He understands that the safety of people is only one of many priorities. He sees that the pressure to be faster, better and cheaper inevitably conflicts with safety. At the same time, he appreciates that there is nothing wrong with choosing a cheaper and faster option, as long as it is proven to be equally safe. What about the way we respond? The manager who has an old legalistic view. He thinks that strict enforcement of the rules and tight control of risk in dangerous activities should keep us safe. He thinks that he can get safety done by simply developing more rules and making people follow the rules. The worker who has a new, adaptive view. He still thinks it is important to develop effective and fair rules that suit the local situation and put them into practice. But he understands that rules cannot handle all possibilities. He believes that being flexible and adaptive are more essential for keeping us safe. He wants to monitor how close we are to the boundary between being safe and unsafe. Upon noticing such warning, he wants to make sure that we have the resources and authority to make extra investments in safety in a timely, proactive manner, even when it may not seem economical in the short run. He knows detecting early warning signals of things going wrong is very challenging. This is partly because information on being faster and cheaper is continuous, convincing and relatively accurate. But information on being safe is sparse, intermittent and often misleading. Also, our ability to detect certain signals is constrained by confirmation bias, which is a well-known situation where we are unconsciously selective in gathering and using only evidence that supports our own wishful thinking. He wants us to take into account such human limitations when designing and operating a system to be safe. He knows that there will be false positive signals which may lead to unnecessary sacrifices on schedule and efficiency, but he is willing to tolerate them. A safer society needs people at all levels, whether policymaker, regulator, auditor, investigator, media, chief executive, board member, designer, middle manager and operator. All of us continuously detect, adapt, learn, anticipate and challenge 
despite the pressures that might be put on them by others. We need leaders and authorities who are humble, willing to listen to the small voices from frontline workers, yet determined to change incentives, regulations and environments to make it easy for frontline workers to do the right things. Our future safety depends on how we view what a safe society will look like and how we work towards it together thereafter.